welcome back to my channel Amy here today we're gonna talk about 14 of my all-time favorite love stories should I just say it all-time favorite love stories so a lot of these are gonna be most of these are gonna be on repeat honestly of course I've talked about them before some of them I've talked about quite a lot over the years <laughs> So we'll just get right into it and start off with probably the obvious. I mean, I I probably mention them in a lot of my videos just because they they are where it began for me. Oh, did I not mention this is male male romances? Of course, because I don't read a lot of male female romances, so Really, when I when I was going back thinking thinking about all the love stories that I have that I still think about, it's all male male. But anyway, yes, the couple that started it all for me, that just like it's it's been so much fun of a journey since I discovered these two guys, Dex and Sloan from the third series by Charlie Cochet. I don't have the actual book of like the original third. I wish I would have gotten the original books of the third series because I love those covers. All the covers have been revamped and I'm not crazy about them. The stories are still the same, but like for me, Dex and Sloan are those book covers, if you know what I mean. I started actually listening to um, this series on Audible and I couldn't stop and to this day I have re-listened to those books all of them many many a times anyway yeah so but Helen Highwater is what started it off this is actually the graphic novel this came out a couple years ago it's it's a I mean it's I love it it's like Dex and Sloan come to life in this graphic novel for me. I, it was uh, the best thing that could have ever happened. <laughs> in my opinion, anyway. Um, Dex is just such a fun character. So uh, Dex was on the human police force and Sloan is part of the thirds, which I can never remember what the thirds stand for, what is wrong with me. It has to do with, with Therians. Sloan is a Therian, so he, he's a, a shapeshifter. He can shift into a jaguar, uh, Dex is human. Like I said, he was on the human police force. Incidents happened and he finds himself at the thirds on his first day. And um, this is where he meets Sloan, his new partner. Uh, there were also some events that happened in uh, the thirds where a new partner for Sloan is needed. Sloan has gone through many partners, um, so he doesn't think Dex is going to last, and neither do most of the other guys on the team, which, oh, I love, I love them all. Ash and Kale are probably my next favorite couple uh, in the third series. Ash is Sloan's, like, best friend, and... Um, Kale is Dex's little brother. So, uh, so yeah, very, very fun series. Uh, Dex is, like I said, he's just a great character. He's so much fun. Sloan is like this broody, um, just he, he, you're very intimidated by him in the, in the beginning of the series, uh, kind of guy. He's still intimidating throughout the story, but with Dex by his side, he sort of loosens up a little bit. Uh, but it's it's a hard road for them because um, they have loved and lost in their past and uh, basically kind of brought each other together again um, many, many times. So um, just a great love story all around, action-packed. We got shapeshifters. We got lots of things happening between the, the thirds and the humans and... Uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. If you have not tried the third series, I highly recommend it. And again, uh, another all-time favorite. This this is probably uh, where I took it next after I discovered Dex and Sloan and how much I loved them. 
I, I want it more. I want it more male male romances and, and then this popped up into my life. This is Him by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. This is Jamie and Ryan's story. Jamie and Ryan were the best of friends. They played hockey together. They went to ho hockey camp when they were 18 and something happened that sort of spooked Ryan. Um, he thought he may have did something and lost his best friend. So he distanced himself from Jamie and Jamie doesn't understand why. And here we are years later where Ryan is, uh, well, they're, bo they're both hockey players for their uh, college teams and they are finally playing against each other. So Ryan now has the opportunity to possibly apologize to Jamie for what happened when they were 18 at the hockey camp. Jamie has pretty much figured he was, you know, straight. He had a pretty steady girlfriend. Ryan, of course, is gay and he pretty sure he came out as gay for his team. So as their friendship sort of uh, reignites, I guess they become closer. And now Jamie is realizing sort of maybe where that missing piece was um, in Ryan. Yeah, so just a great best friends to lovers by awakening story. Ugh. The whole the whole thing us was good just as well. And there's also like a little a little story uh, called Epic, just a very little novella to kind of finalize, I guess, um, Jamie and Ryan's story. But oh, yeah, love, 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 love. And I want to talk about this book real quick. This is a this is a very old read for me. Well, I say old. It came probably it came definitely after the thirds, and I'm pretty sure might have came after the him and us series because like i said i was wanting more and i, I think male male romances have definitely progressed over the years um there there wasn't like too too much to choose from so when i ran into into one i immediately would try it out and i fell in love with so many so many stories but this one i don't know if i talk about it a lot um, but the series is called Timing. The first book is Timing. This is by Mary Calmay. I probably, I know I've mentioned it before. I know I've mentioned her before. I really do need to read more of her. I have in the past read more Mary Calmay and have never been dis disappointed. Um, but there's, she has a lot of, a lot of good reads out there that I, I really need to get into. But this is the first book called Timing. It's a three book series, but it's, we follow the same exact couple. So, um, this is Stefan and Rand's story. So Stefan and Rand have been enemies since they first met each other. Stefan is the best friend of Rand's sister. Yes. Yeah, so Rand's sister's name is Charlotte. Stefan and Charlotte are best friends. Charlotte is getting married. Um, so Rand has to come back to Texas because um, he's going to be the man of honor in her wedding. <laughs> there is also, uh, I don't quite remember what Stefan does. Uh, but anyway, there's like a business deal happening in Texas as well. So he's like, you know, going to kill two birds with one stone kind of thing. But Charlotte reassures him that her brother Rand is not going to be there at the wedding. Uh, so he, you know, feels better about going because him and Rand just have not, they have not meshed well together. It's like Rand has a big chip on his shoulder for Stefan, but we find out why, why, why he has a chip <laughs> on his shoulder later on and a little later on in the story. Um, but there's also a little murder that happens in this in this story as well. And I, the the second and third book have some you know some not not like mystery thriller aspects to it, but um, kind of sorta you know something's always there. There's always something going on. Uh, I don't quite remember. I don't quite remember the second and the third book. I, I just really remember this first book because this is where we get Rand and Stefan's story where they, you know, finally tell each other or Rand 
tell Stefan his true feelings and uh, why he feels how he feels and um, yeah so as their budding friendship goes so as they as they become I guess maybe friends along the way while um, Stefan's there for Charlotte's wedding a, a little bit more starts to to happen between our two guys so we definitely have like a a first time um situation here this is some this is a story or a series i i need to read again i i read it i know twice for sure um a couple years ago when i first you know when i first ran across it i really enjoyed it and if i wasn't reading the thirds i was reading this book um, it's just kind of stuck with me all these years. I really enjoyed it. It's a great love story between these two guys. A great uh, hate to love friendship. Enemies, enemies to lovers, uh, or enemies to friends, to friends to lovers <laughs> kind of situation. Absolutely loved it. Highly recommend you check it out if you've never heard it. Uh, it's it's a good one. These are in no particular order, by the way. I just figured I get. The, the most obvious out the way, which was Dex and Sloan. And of course, I had to give a shout out to Jamie and Ryan. And I, I, I know I've mentioned Stefan and Rand before, but probably not enough on my channel. And I really wanted to highlight them and let you know how good their love story is. Um, but also, another one that it's not going to shock you, Nick and Charlie. From the Heartstopper series. Absolutely love these two little guys. They are so sweet. They have my heart. Uh, if you have not watched the, the Netflix show, do it. It's so, so cute. I cannot wait for season two. Um, the, the first season, I believe, is um, volumes one and two, I think. So I'm guessing season two is going to be volumes three and four. Um, but these, these guys are so cute. So we have Charlie. Charlie knows he's gay. Um, he's, I'm pretty sure he's open at school, openly gay at school. Um, and then we have Nick. Nick, uh, does, doesn't really consider himself, he hasn't put a label on himself, but I guess he kind of, you know, just thinks he's straight, you know. Um, he's one of those that he sees the normal, you know, boy and girl kind of thing, so he he guesses he's gonna one day maybe find a girl um but then he he and charlie strike up a, a friendship um since there's a little incident that happens and um charlie i mean nick sort of comes to charlie's rescue and they have like a little friendship that's budding and that friendship turns into a little bit more as nick's trying to figure himself out and figure out what these feelings are Nick is having, Charlie is having these feelings as well, but he doesn't want to express them too much to Nick because, you know, he thinks uh, Nick is straight. Um, and Nick's just all confused up in his poor little head. It's so cute, so, so cute, so adorable. These two boys just have my heart. Uh, yeah, so you knew that already, though. Also, I really need to get this book. I have, I have one book. Um, but it's not my favorite. I mean, I, I love their story. But this is where the story begins. This is Heated Rivalry. Uh, so this is Shane and Ilya's story. My favorite enemies to lovers, probably of all time. Shane and Ilya meet during uh, rookie season. And the world has put them um, as rivalries. Uh, so they they sort of play on that even i mean they they are sort of rivals um because they usually play on opposite teams and there really is a little bit of a hate to love here because i believe so shane knows he's gay but he's not acting on that because he doesn't want anything to interfere with his hockey career Ilya's pretty open uh, about who he is, although I do believe he is seen dating more women. Um, but there, there's a spark there uh, when they when they get together, and it's like it's almost like Shane hates him because of this spark that he feels 
for Ilya. I think the same goes for Ilya, but I think it's more on Shane because Ilya's, Ilya's more just kind of like this easy breezy laid back kind of guy um, and Shane's very uptight. And then when they do come together, they the, like the hate is still there. They like still like hate each other for the way they feel about each other. It's oh, it's everything. Absolutely love these two guys. So we get sort of their end story in the long game. Uh, which I, I did really like, but Shane frustrated me in that book, and I got really aggravated with him. But um, this is where it all began with Heated Rivalry, and it will forever be one of um, one of the, my dear romance, male-male romances that are dear to my heart, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Let's not forget about Tio and Jack in The Virgin Flyer. Ugh, this is by Lucy Lennox. <sighs> I just can't with this book. I've, I've done reread it a couple times. Absolutely love it. Um, also will be forever near and dear to my heart. But what really gets me about this love story is how Tia and Jack first meet. And I, I have to read this to you because it's my favorite line of the book. I mean, it's in the very beginning. It's in the synopsis. So you, you know this. If you haven't already read Virgin Fire, you should. You need to. Um, but if you have, you know this line. So Tio um, and his best friend Chris at the time, they sort of see each other on the side a little bit. Chris isn't out, but he still has a hold on Tio. Tio is a virgin. Uh, they've, nev they've never actually, they food around, but they've never actually had sex. Um, so he decides that like he's no longer gonna wait for Chris. He is ready. Um, so he puts out this ad, I guess, or I, I don't know if it's a hook. I'm sure it's a hookup app. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, he's. Uh, I have. It says Tio decides to put out a no strings attached write up on a hookup app. So it says one night of love making with absolutely no talking. I just want to be held and loved on without chit chat or expectations. Treat me like I'm the most important thing in the world. Please stay all night and hold me, but don't be surprised if I'm gone in the morning. So he just wants to experience, he just wants to experience love and he's ready for it. So he puts out this ad or in, in a hookup app. And then we have Jack who is an airline pilot he's very kind of one and done you know because he's he's flying all over the world so whenever he has a break or he's like in between flights wherever he's at he'll pull up his hookup app and get with somebody you know um and he runs across Tio's ad and he has to respond to it he has to be that that man that one night he has to be it and oh my gosh that scene is everything. It's everything between these two. And then of course the story just goes on from there. They 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 don't see each other and I think they run into each other somewhere along the way. It's been a while since I since I've read it, but I had read it. I have read it a couple times. Um loved love Tio and Jack's story. Oh. And I have to have to mention this book this is Without You by Morley Valentine. This is Julian and Deacon's story. So these two guys have been knowing each other. Um, Ju okay, I have here written in my notes, Julian is grieving over the man he lost and Deacon is grieving over the brother he lost. So Julian um, and Deacon's brother were in a relationship and they were in a very um, deep relationship very serious relationship and Deacon um Deacon sort of feels like the black sheep of the family he has started sort of hated Julian for coming in and everyone in his family loving Julian and yet here he is he's part of this family but he feels like he's the black sheep and they're like taking Julian in and loving him more than Deacon. Um, so there's a little bit of a hate here. Julian doesn't know why G Deacon hates him so much. Um, 
So when they lose this person that connects them, they seek each other out for comfort. And this was uh, one, of, one of the most beautiful stories between two guys um, that need this comfort because of what they both have lost. I, I, I cried so much in this book, like I already get teary-eyed just thinking about it. Deacon has never been with another man, so it, it makes it out to be a very, very slow burn of a romance. There's this, just these two guys coming together because of what they lost and Deacon realizing his feelings for poor Julian and um, how he wants to react on that. Just, uh, just overall beautiful story. Beautiful. These next two books are actually part of the Vino and Veritas series. I, these, I, I think about these, I haven't like done a reread of, of these, but I think about these every now and then, like they, they're just stuck in my head just because they were such beautiful stories. So um, first I have Headstrong, which is the third book in the series. And this book was written by Eden Finley. So these, all these books in this series are written by different authors. And this is Rain and Wit story. So Rain is, he got, gets a job at um, Vino and Veritas, the uh, gay friendly bookstore and wine bar. Genius idea. Rain uh, was a hockey player, uh, but due to an injury, he's not able to play anymore. So um, he's just working at Vino and Veritas. And he's just there just you know, he's sort of in like a depressing state and he's just taking it one day at a time. And then we have Wit who does play hockey and he, I'm pretty sure he is openly gay. It's been, it's been a, a while since I've read this, but, um, so he goes into the, the bookstore just to check it out. You know, um, a gay friendly wine and bookstore. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, I need to open this up. <laughs> But anyway, he recognizes Rain as a, a former hockey player, and the two strike up a sort of a friendship that turns into a little bit more. But yeah, the, they're 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 more friends at first before they become more. Um, but because it takes a, a little while for Rain to understand what he's feeling for Wit, because there's something going on. Like he's giving him tips uh, for hockey, and he's also kind of giving him tips like because Wits, you know, he, he wants to find someone. I, I, I do believe he's a virgin as well and he just wants to experience um, being with someone. And so Rain's sort of helping him find that someone but then Rain's also feeling a little jealous towards these guys that Wit is finding. Uh, so it's very cute uh, love story and um, I guess by awakening story as as well one of my favorite tropes as well as first time um both of their first time if i'm not mistaking with with a guy uh so yeah great great story and then we have aftermath uh, this one's by la witt this is the fifth book in the vino and veritas series and this is brent and john's story uh, i do believe there's a little age gap between these two guys um Brent, also a former harky, harky, hockey <laughs> player, he was in a horrible car accident that has left him disabled. He is in chronic pain all the time. Also, chronic depression, chronic pain, feeling like he'll never be himself again. He's just at, at the low of the low right now and his friends suggest they go to Vino and Veritas I believe there's gonna be someone playing and he just wants Brent just to get out just stop being alone just get out and just mingle around people you don't have to get with anybody just I mean if you find somebody great but let's just get out and let's mingle and then for the first time in a really long time John catches Brent's eye uh, he sees this sexy fox on stage playing his guitar and singing and he gets really, really enthralled by him. And I believe they do strike up a conversation somewhere that night and they try to, or Brent tries, or I guess maybe, yeah, Brent tries, John offers 
you know, let's, you know, let's go to my place kind of thing. So Brent tries and, and then all of a sudden he's like, no, I can't do this. And he sort of bails on John, but you know, John can't help but still think about him. And, um, really if, 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 if they can't be more, maybe they can be friends kind of thing. Um, John is also having a hard time as well. John is a, a single divorced father in his 40s and he's just trying to make the best out of his situation. He, like I said, he is a father. He does have a daughter. So in between his time with his daughter, uh, he tries to connect with, with Brent and just have a, a, a friendship with them. And they, they slowly, slowly but surely turn into more. It's a very slow process, uh, slow burn, uh, male male romance. Um, and there's, there's a lot that Brent has to get past to be able to be with John. And it's just so heartfelt and it just broke, <laughs> broke my heart. Oh my gosh. Such a good story. Just good backstories between both these guys, like what they've been through and them just forming a friendship together and just helping each other out and, and, oh. Beautiful, beautiful. And of course, uh, When You Come Back to Me by Emma Scott. Beautiful, this is Holden and River story. Holden, this is Holden, he's a beautiful man. He's got some issues, he's got some issues, but he puts up this front of um, just this preppy, sort of don't take any shit kind of attitude. He's openly gay, but like I said, he's not going to take any shit from you. Um, and then we have River, who is our just good boy next door. Um, he knows he's gay. He's not out. They they meet their last year in high school when, when they're seniors, but um, this is River School that Holden is going to. Holden is uh, moving in with his aunt and uncle for his senior year. His parents kind of don't really know what to do with him. So his aunt and his uncle take him in and treat him like, like his own. I really, I really enjoyed that, that part of the story as well. His aunt and uncle really just wanted him to be happy and wanted to do whatever they could for him. Cause I, I don't believe his parents were that great of people. So yeah, he kind of lashes out over that, but River has a very good family. He also has, um, his mother is dying of cancer, so he also has that on, on him, and he doesn't want to come out, because he doesn't want to put any more strain on his family. He's just, like I said, he's just a good guy, um, but then he catches the eye of, or they catch each other, other's eye, I mean, uh, River finds Holden very attractive in the beginning, but there's also something standoffish that he gets from Holden. Holden, of course, thinks um, River is very attractive as well, but he's got this attitude that uh, River's, you know, this the star quarterback. He's, you know, he's he's got to he's got to put up that that front. So yeah, it's it's a long, long love story. It takes place over years both these men are just they're heartbroken individually and when they come together it's it's beautiful but they can't seem to hold on to that so it just it takes them years to be able to accept i guess each other and the way they feel about each other it's ugh, it's a beautiful story you all know this beautiful <laughs> all of these stories are beautiful before we get into this one book, I are one couple. Uh, I want to talk about this couple, uh, Vance and Luke from um, the On My Knees series. <sighs> These guys, oh my goodness. Vance is an artist. Uh, Worship is the first book, and this is where they meet. Vance is an artist. Luke is a religious man, and uh, he has to cover up who he is because of beliefs that he has drilled into his head from a young boy. So it's very, 
Very heartfelt, this story between Luke and Vance. Vance is bisexual. He's actually on his honeymoon and then he finds himself alone. His wife has abandoned him. <laughs> Um, and I think they were on a cruise and the cruise ship have, you know, they were brought him to an island and the cruise ship has left. So here we have Luke is on his yacht just trying to enjoy some time off because uh, sometimes he just needs a little break from it all because he's basically covering up. I mean, he's true to himself, but only with his religion and his beliefs. Um, the other truth about himself has to be kept hidden and it's very hard for him. Um, and this first time that he meets Vance, he lets, he just lets it all drop and their love story begins and it's the best ever, the best ever. It, it also is a, is sort, not, not necessarily a slow burn because of course our couples kind of come, come together right at the beginning of the story. Um, but they also are drawn apart for a while and they can't keep thinking about each other and somehow fate finds them again and as much as Luke tries to hold back his feelings he he just he he can't uh, it's very hard for him it's a very up and down kind of story for for both our guys more on Luke's side than Vance um, Vance just is just trying to be there for Luke he, he, if even if just a friend, but, but Luke is, is just hurting. He's hurting on the inside because of the love that he feels for Vance. And he hates that he can't be outward with that love. It's ugh, heart shattering y'all, heart shattering. <laughs> Which now leads me to Josh and Ezra's story. This is Raph also by Ella James or Ellis James worth every word worth every word. This is almost 800 pages, but it is <laughs> worth, I think, anyway. I know I've read a lot of reviews that said the book was way too long, but in, in my eyes, it was not. It was perfect. It was perfect in every way. Uh, it was frustrating because of the longevity, but I feel like these two characters needed that story they needed that story to come together and be with each other they needed all that distance all that self-hate uh, especially more on um, Ezra's part Ezra is a very who he's um, he's a hard he's a hard character he's had it rough he's been through conversion camps he's just been through it all his mother all I will say is bad person. She is a bad person. He hasn't had the be the best time and it's been drilled into him that the way he feels is wrong and in order for him to sort of suppress those feelings, he outwardly bullies others, uh, especially his new stepbrother. So he goes to live with his dad and his wife and they're the wife's son, Josh. Josh is such a good person. In fact, Ezra calls him do-gooder. Uh, he just, he has a huge heart, um, but that heart belongs to Ezra. But Ezra, Ezra puts Josh through a lot and Josh does not back down, does not back down. Uh, he just, if anything, he just wants to help his stepbrother. Um, things start to es escalate, Ezra, just starts to bully him. He lashes out at these feelings he's having. He allows these feelings to happen and then he lashes out at them. It's again heartfelt and just heart shattering and it's mostly uh, it's mostly Ezra that your heart goes out to but Josh too because Ezra has to sort of put Josh behind in order to he can't he can't feel he does not want to feel the way he feels um, it's it's too hard for him he doesn't want to put that on Josh and he's still holding in the fact from his father that he's gay I think Josh has come out eventually that uh, he is gay not at the time when they meet as stepbrothers but eventually Josh does come out as gay um, 
but yeah, I uh, just, well, y'all know this, just one of, one of my absolute favorites and will always be one of my absolute favorite love stories. And of course we cannot forget you and me, Luke and Landon's story, uh, by Talbert, my number one male male romance of 2022, like, oh my gosh, these two men, they, they were everything. Both really good men. Luke sort of lost touch with his son due to things that his late wife has have done. And then we have Landon who is such a good guy through and through. He is outwardly gay. He has a great relationship with his son, but he comes from a very religious family and he was married to a woman and he had to divorce her because he wanted, he finally wanted to be true to himself. So his story is just as beautiful as Luke's, but just on a different level. I realize we have a lot of Luke's in these stories, but yeah, Luke is, is, he's having a hard time with, he just wants to um, have a relationship with his son and he wants something, a letter that he finds uh, to his wife from like, I think his son's school sort of knocks him out of what whatever world he is in. And he realizes that he's gotta do more. He's gotta be there for his son. Landon sort of takes him under his wing and helps him get that relationship back with his son. So Luke and Landon form this beautiful friendship between each other. And Luke starts to feel these things that he's not sure of. He starts to think these things like Landon's just a very beautiful man. He's beautiful on the inside as well as outside. Just he feels very connected towards Landon and he doesn't know what to do with these feelings. And then we have Landon who kind of feels the same way about Luke. Through their friendship, he has just really started to fall for this man and realize what a good man Luke is and loves that he wants to be this this father figure for his son and but he he doesn't want to act on these feelings because you know Luke is supposedly straight and he doesn't want to lose he doesn't even want to even though he can tell like there's something there that he can feel like maybe Luke is feeling something. He doesn't want to act on that because he doesn't want to lose Luke's friendship. So it's it's like a, a war between themselves with each other. <sighs> it, very slow burn, but oh my, oh my gosh. I need, I need to re reread this story so, so bad. It was so beautiful. And I just want to experience it all over again. <sighs> Yes, like all time favorite male male of last year. Talked about it so many times, but yes, here we are again. And lastly, I have to give a shout out to these two guys. I know I'm still in their story. I don't know how it's going to end. I'm very frustrated right now. Are you okay? Bella. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> wow. You okay? <laughs> Come on in. What are you doing? Anyway, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, Waylon and Wheel. This is the Lost Boy series, the first book. I can never remember which book is first. Okay, the first book is Where There's a Wheel. So I have finally finished this book. I know in my wrap up, I was not done. Um, I'm very frustrated <laughs> with the way it has ended. But I will get back into their story. But as of right now, I am very frustrated with these two guys, especially Waylon. I, I mean, I like I said before, I don't get what he's going through. I understand it's hard. But it's like 
I want him just to trust in his feelings, trust and will. Don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the man that made you feel this way. His father. Like I feel for him. I feel for him. I just want him to realize that he is better than that, you know, and, and he and Will's friendship and what is happening between them is better than all of that. It's better than his father. Oh, it's so <laughs> frustrating. Uh, so yes, I have not finished their story. I am very looking forward to it though, but I had to throw them in there because they are fresh on my mind. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I know what, what I want to happen. And I'm also frustrated with, with, you know, their friends as well. One, one friend in particular towards the end of this first book. I, I, I don't know. I don't understand that part of the book. So I'm hoping to get more into that in the, in the next book. I don't know. I don't want to say too much in case you know you haven't read this book and maybe you want to get into the series. Um, but there, there is a missing person involved and it's kind of weaved into the story. There, it's, it's not, it's, the story's more focused on Waylon and Will, of course. Their, their past with each other as far as when they were children and then the gap that's between then and, and now when, um, Will has come back and, um, they have sort of reconnected at first as em enemies and then uh getting that friendship a little a little bit better or gaining that friendship that they had a little bit more as the book went on but then again we get this missing person come up again towards the end of the book and i i hope in the second book like i want i want that resolved I want that part of that of the book or of the story resolved. Uh, I mean, as well as Will and Waylon's love story, but uh, yeah, that I don't know why that's. I know it's part of their story and it has to be mentioned, but like I want some sort of closure with that part of the book, if that makes any sense. It's hard. It's hard to talk about <laughs> without giving anything away. But yeah, Waylon and Will. Uh, they are fresh on my mind, and I'm still not done with their story, but I had to mention them because I am enjoying their journey so far. Even though they are frustrating me, I am enjoying it. Now, this this is a very, very slow burn. Very, very slow. I, I wasn't... We were getting towards the end of the book, and I was like, what? I, I don't know if anything's going to happen between these two guys. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, uh, I'm, in, I'm enjoying their story and I can't wait to get back into it. But that's it, y'all. That's my 14 favorite love stories, if not of all time, uh, recent favorite love stories. Uh, just ones that are just stay in my mind and I think about every now and then. Some I think about on a daily basis. Dex and, Thro and Sloan. I think about Dex and Sloan probably every day. Um, those, th them two guys will forever be my all-time favorite love story. So if you're sick of me mentioning it, sorry, not sorry. I'm going to keep saying it because I absolutely love these guys and I love their story. I love their world. I just love them. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what are some of y'all favorite love stories of all time current favorite love stories, whatever, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know. And it doesn't have to be male male. I'm open to whatever. Hope you are all doing well out there. Hope y'all had a very happy Valentine's Day, whoever you may have shared it with. Hugs from me all around and I'll see y'all very soon in a new video. Bye y'all.